So here's that problem about migraines. They tell us that based on clinical studies, uh, the 2% of people who are on this uh, drug have side of, uh, studied weight gain as a side effect. So then they're asking us, would it be unusual to see 16 patients who experience weight gain in a random sample of 600 patients who take the medication? And then why? So I see, so some things I see here, I see it's not a straight categorical, uh, straight uh, quantitative variable. So is it a binomial distribution? Well, let's check it out. So to be a binomial distribution, there has to be two, two responses. And yes, you saw weight gain. No, they didn't. That's a yes, no. So that's binomial. Um, I think whether, whether uh, I take the drug and gain weight versus whether you take the drug or gain weight are independent. So that there's the independence thing. The probability that I, I experience weight gain compared to the probability you experience weight gain is 2%. That doesn't change. I mean, there's no reason for it to change this, but since it's uh, based on uh, already extended, you know, done, they've done extended studies on this and it seems to hold. So that's true. So we've got three of the four. Then there's a fixed number of trials because there's 600 patients. So this is the binomial distribution. Now I'm going to ask myself, can I use that shortcut that Dr. Steven talks about um, here, uh, no, not there, here, not, no, no, here, here, I got it now. <laughs> On this page 76, we're talking about the shortcut. Instead of having to use a binomial calculator or the binomial formulas, can we just use the thing where we're doing the means and the standard deviations and then testing if there's more than two, using the two standard deviation outlier test. Um, now, something he talks about, very, and, he, and he just kind of buries it in right here. Here was a pointer. I don't know why he did that. I mean, I guess it does, in, a, in a stat one course, it doesn't matter too, too much, but it's there and, and we should be aware of it. Um, this has to be true in order to use these techniques. This is a condition that needs to meet. So why the heck did he do that? Can, why is that condition there? Well, here's what's going to happen. We get, um, remember back in chapter two, three, where we had... Um, uh, you used it, did it, he had a skewed distribution. We used the mean, we used the median and the IQR to do an outlier, that 1.5 outlier, te outlier test. And if we had a symmetric distribution, we could use the mean and the standard deviation to uh, two standard deviations to check for outliers. So we got to make sure this, this mean and two standard deviation, it mean the standard deviation requires a symmetric distribution. If this is true, then it's symmetric. So I did some of this work ahead of time here. Let's let's come back here, uh, right here, right? So I did, so 2% of the people suffer from weight gain or experience weight gain. Um, trial is 600, so is 600 times 0.02 bigger than five? Well, it sure is, it's 12. And is then one minus 2.02 is 0.98. And 0.98 times 600 certainly bigger than bigger than five. So this is good to go. That tells us that the distribution is symmetric. Now, don't take my word for it. Let's go take a look. Let's go check out. Let's go check out in Canvas in these online statistical tools. Uh, so where I'm where I'm at, I'm at modules, um, course resources, online statistical tools. And see this binomial probability history maplet. This one has limited utility. It does work, but uh, this is I would I would, and it does a lot for us. But I would just assume you didn't use this one. It's not as it's not as useful. So and there's a there's a I'm seeing a symmetric distribution. I would dare say it's probably normal, but there's some other conditions we don't know about yet for a normal distribution. Certainly symmetric. So since it's symmetric, we can use the mean and two standard deviation outlier tests. So what I did is I did, what did I do? Okay, so I said there's the mean, you know, n times p and then n times p times q, one minus p, right? And I got that for a standard deviation. So then I just found the z-score for 16 said it would be unusual for 16 people out of 600 to experience weight gain. So that came up to be a, 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 a Z score of 1.2. That's not two standard deviations away from the mean. So no, this isn't, it wouldn't be unusual to see 16 people out of 600 experience weight gain.
And there's the there's the statistical proof for that. We could also not find the z-score. We could just use the method we learned back in chapter two about about two outliers finding the upper fence. Uh, we don't really care about the lower fence, right? Because because 16 is bigger than the mean, so we know we're only talking about an upper upper fence thing. So there's two standard deviations added to the mean. It's 18.6. 18.86 and that's not 16 is not that far out so not unusual to experience see that many people experience weight gain okay so that's that's the best way to do it uh what if so then and and that's what i'd love to see you do next week you're going to see an, a quiz question that's going to be like this and this is what i'm hoping you do check check to make sure it works it will work um and then you run this run this test you know do this do this outlier check OK, um, now, what if what if this were and I'm going to do this, this isn't really something I'm going to assess you on in this course, um, but it's good to make note of it. Uh, if you have to do a stats two or some more statistics course work for medical, your medical training or whatever, then they might mention this stuff. So what I'm going to show you is what happens if it's not normal. What if it's not a symmetric distribution? What do we do? Well, then we can come back here. Let's come back to Canvas. Uh, let's see. In this online statistical tools, I get this other binomial calculator that works really slick. And in this case, we had 0.02, and then we had 600 trials, and we want to know 16 people. Calculate. And what we're really looking for is this one. I know that's exactly 16, but what we're really looking for is 16 or more, right? That's really what we're asking us. It would be unusual to find 16 or more people experience weight gain and so that's the probability that we're looking for i only say this because this is where we're headed and once we come to chapter eight so we might as well start thinking that way um so 16 percent or more 16 people or more and that's way bigger than five percent we learned in chapter five that or chapter four that right we learned in chapter four that maybe i should point that out to you sometimes people miss that um Basics. I think he talks about it here. Uh, oh, let me see this. I'm not going to be able to find it probably right off the bat, huh? Mm. Anyways, it's in this chapter. He's kind of got it buried a little bit. I don't remember where it is. Um, if the events of something happen is less than 5%, we consider it unusual. So, if I would. I, I know what I know what's in here. You can find it and point it out if you want in the discussion forum. But that's and that fifteen percent number certainly is a lot more than five percent. So it's un it's not unusual to get sixteen people experience weight gain. So same decision as we made using that other test, but I think it's a lot easier. And it's really where we're headed anyways. Okay, so hopefully this helps. Um helps you out. I'll stop this video before it gets too big.